As I've given the Wuxia epic hero, or Ying Xiang, more watches over the years, I've come to realize that it wasn't just the optics of the film's design that made such an impression. It was the choreography. And I don't mean the fantastic combat scenes throughout. I mean the observable choreography that connects fiction, truth, viewpoint, emotion, and intent to color, location, and even costumes and makeup. A perfect choreography cannot exist without a rhythm on which to move. Within the confines of a truly poetic setup, Hero establishes a rhythm to which the entire film will be choreographed. With an opening move, Nameless has begun his initial strategy against the king, which continues to play out as each takes the opportunity to advance, contemplate, defend, and attack, back and forth, until a sacrifice is made. And this notion of rhythm and repetition drifts into the visual and audio elements as well. I remember watching Hero when it was finally released in the US in 2004. What captivated me was the powerful visual composition of the film which impacted me in such a way that I found myself inspired by it, even throughout my college architecture courses. Its immense scale and vivid imagery found ways of seeping into the various design projects that I undertook. What director Zhang Yi Mao, cinematographer Christopher Doyle, and production designers Hu Ting Sao and Yi Zheng Xiao created with Hero was an epic visual catalog of interpretation and feelings. In order to break down why Hero was so ingenious in its design and storytelling, we should look at the very word we use to describe it, epic. In its most direct definition, an epic is a narrative about heroism, typically focusing on historic legends and from the traditions of oral storytelling. In its adjective form, epic describes the characteristics of this narrative, referring to things vast and monumental. And hero is both. But what makes hero so unique amongst other epics? Let's take a look at one of the most well-known examples, the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Like any other epic narrative, the Lord of the Rings is told from a single point of view by a single narrator. While the film's characters take varying paths which separate and weave, they remain interconnected as parts of a single story. Whereas Hero has varying narrators, whose verbal and mental accounts are focused on a single story, but with varying narratives, which are eventually dismissed to reveal a single truth. This notion of multiple things merging into one beautifully echoes the ambitions of the king, to conquer and unite the six kingdoms in the name of the Qin Empire, summed up perfectly in two words, our land, or more appropriately translated, under heaven. Like the pieces on the game board, these varying accounts are differentiated by color, red for namelesses, expressing passion and anger, which fits perfectly with his underlying intentions of revenge blue for the kings, expressing perhaps his inner calm, wisdom, and underlying sincere intentions, or perhaps his seemingly cold indifference to any sympathy for the people who he aims to conquer and thus unite. Eventually the truth comes to light and the colors are more earthy and grounded, more simple and realistic, more pure, honest. Then we have briefly infused and in supporting the true reality, broken swords memories with flying snow, which are primarily green, representing tranquility, nature, and rebirth. Rebirth of the notion of Tian Sha and the Confucian aim to unite people under heaven. But beneath all of the audacious colors and exciting visuals, that undercurrent remains, that rhythm, the moves and counter moves between Nameless and the King as lie is pitted against assumption is pitted against truth. All of these varying narratives are set against the present time and location, the King's palace, which is all black and silver, like everything else relating to the Qin Empire. Their monochromatic appearance and monochromatic sound equates to a single entity, a single voice. And you'll notice other details vary from account to account. Costume differences, hair and makeup differences, and overall expressions and mannerisms. 
The locations and sets, and their immense scales, act in support of the narrative of the epic. Several sets were built at Hongdian World Studios. Where a reconstruction of the Qin Empire's Yanyang Palace was originally built for Chen Kaiga's 1998 film, The Emperor and the Assassin. At the time of building, it was the largest set in China and underwent extensive renovations in preparation for filming Hero. Additionally, various geographical locations with diverse ecosystems were selected all over the country. These were chosen for their unique natural features, innate beauty and perfection, dramatic components, ancient surroundings in bold colors, and vast isolation. In concert, the sets, locations, rhythmic undercurrent of pace, and bold differentiating color palettes for the varying narratives dance together in a choreography of the sublime, illustrating the oral accounting of the epic, in which perspective doesn't always amount to the truth. And sometimes, the truth takes time to reach. Want to be our hero? Make sure to like the video below, if you did, and hit that subscribe button while you're there. And check out some of our other videos on the production design of your favorite films.